from your experience, what are sort of the top qualities of a differentiator, high performance uh, team uh, from from an average one? <laughs> Probably a cliche. Um, if you had to use the cliche, look, you know, we honestly believe that the champion champion teams will always succeed and perform over time better than a, a team of team of champions. I think that's that's probably the most pertinent thing that I, I've seen along along the way. I think um as um as Adam Kingsley um uses the term the yin and yin and the yang. And I think um Adam Kingsley being a coach here you've got to work for each other, understand the human element. Um everyone does have a bad day, but the most important uh, it's most importantly how team members communicate with each other and develop and foster relationships. Uh, I think if you know, the individuals within that team can uh, can really communicate and get on well and and understand each other, and it creates this environment where you you, you want to go to war, war with each other. And 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 trust is a really really big word. I, I use that don't use that word lightly, but yeah, must, must be able to trust each other implicitly. How do you like to? Uh, on board and a new staff member to your team what's some of your sort of um, key ways to ensure that they do feel like they're they're part of it and I guess they feel comfortable early uh, but they've also got a good understanding on how to how to fit in and what success looks like in their role yeah no really really good question I think I mean first and foremost is like if it uh, um, to, to ascertain what that new member's skill set um, may be able to bring and, and, and fit within the team, within the high performance and medical team. And um, one strength coach or strength power coach or senior strength power coach or strength conditioning coach um, may have a particular skill set, but they might have their value value add. They have, have experiences and um, experiences and, and qualifications or um, or skill set that may 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 be a value add or overlap with other members of the team. So leadership qualities, communication, management, um, over the years would have been some of your favorite ways to develop those skill sets, I guess, for, for the audience listening in that fairly feel uh, on top of the technicalities, their um, you know, load management spreadsheets and their strength um, you know, programming and technical models with, with running efficiency, but um, managing programs is something they want to develop. Um, yeah, what has been some of your favorite ways to to develop that that side of the role. Yeah, look, I think I think um, in terms of trying to develop the management skills, so to speak, I think you got got you've got to be prepared to make mistakes. I think that's the most important thing. I uh, uh, early, early on, early on, probably the biggest criticism at, um, of myself and that I was provided was, was I, I used to micromanage too much because you, you you want to be a perfectionist um but it's micromanaging the strength coach micromanaging um the the conditioning guy micromanaging the rehab micromanaging so many different things but you can't you, you can't do that because <laughs> then it ends up ends up being a situation where the staff are not able to think for themselves not able to flourish bring their ideas to the table um feel like they're contributing in value. How does the how does sports science technology sort of um, influence your decision making on day to day? Um yeah, what are some of your key pillars, I guess, that you like to to keep a, your finger on the pulse with when managing AFL team? Yeah, look, I think um yeah, definitely intensity. I think this uh, understand look, I think understanding the game plan is a, is critical, understanding the way the coach wants to play. These systems and structures, um, whereas, yeah, if you were to use uh, AFL terminology, uh, we're going to be a contest team. We're going to be playing um, more a game where we have shit long down the line and play contests to, um, yeah, yeah, maintaining possession, keeping the ball off opposition, um, or we're going to be playing with speed, or yeah, you know, we're we're a transition team or a you know, turnover team. It's really understanding that, and then how 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 then to to provide provide the the right detail with using technology to to help the coach and the coaching tr- team understand this is the level we need to get to when things aren't going well um whether we call that train wreck or whatever we want to frame that uh how do you what's a situation where um you, you, what are some key areas i guess to manage the team 
Um, because as we know, sometimes it's not as bad as it looks and, um, yeah, how do you, I guess, deal with perception of the club and, and, um, getting in front of it when it's not going well. Yeah, it's a good question. Look, I, I mean, I, I, a lot of clubs will have different, <laughs> different examples of their own train wrecks and, um, you know, we, we, you know, we, I will, we would have had a perceived calf epi epidemic in, in 2019, uh, uh, for, for numerous reasons. And I think the most important thing is that, that what ends up happening is that if you're get, getting pressure and questions being asked from numerous sources, you know, let alone media, um, um, you know, you know, it might, be, might have been clubs in the past where oh, there's been a hamstring epidemic or a syndesmosis epidemic. And there's probably, uh, I mean, there's different train wrecks, don't get me wrong, I'm just alluding to an injury, injury, in, injury um, focused epidemic. But what ends up happening is a coach quite rightly will start asking questions and um, the GM will start asking questions, board members start asking questions. And 